With this sort of setting the stage, what we're going to talk about, I want to bring out somebody here who has challenged their beliefs to a nth degree. His name is Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent, let's get up here and talk to people right here in these eggs. Mark. I nice see you, man. Which, you want to be here? Here. So am I you, sitting here or on the couch? Where do you want to be? Well, I'll stay here. I want to get in the egg. No, that's fine. Okay. I don't know if that, is this the correct way to do this? Ah, very Swedish and very comfortable. I'm looking at the stagehands, wondering if I picked the right spot. I think we're good. Ah, so how are you, Mark? I'm good. Um, tired. <laughs> tired? Yeah. I am tired, too. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And sleep. Um, yeah. I don't know if, anyone, if everyone here has seen the documentary uh, Behind the Curve, but Mark is featured in that documentary. It's, it's on Netflix. It follows you around. It turns you into more of a superstar than you already are. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, I can vouch that we spoke earlier and you were a very smart, capable, uh, decent, attractive man. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, um, but, uh, there's something in your biography that I, no one ever asked you about. And I want to start here yeah. just to break the ice. Yeah. You used to be a pinball champion. I used to play video games for a living. It's true. Okay. Uh, I, I started out, uh, that, that was how my, my career started out. I was a sous chef at a Mediterranean restaurant in Seattle, and I won a pinball, uh, a computer pinball tur tournament back in, oh wow, 94, long, long time ago, uh, by a little company out of Tokyo called Little Wing. And the producer out of Boulder, Colorado, afterwards hired me as a ringer. So I traveled across the country. <laughs> you were a pinball ringer. I, well, just video game ringer in general. I just played whatever games they had. And I went to like, you know, Mac World and San Fran and Mac World and Boston and E3 and stuff like that and made the games look better than they were. And that's how I started out. You made games look better than they were. Yes. So if I'm hearing you correctly, this planted one of many seeds in which you realized there are hidden forces at work. <laughs> Pulling the wool over people's eyes. Yes. And you were part of a conspiracy. Yes, I was. I was part of a pinball conspiracy, a video game conspiracy, mm -hmm. as it were. Um, that's a pretty cool gig. So you've already been famous once. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, where, did you, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Seattle? I grew up north of Seattle, if anyone knows the Seattle area up in the United States. Uh, a little rural island called Whidbey. W-H-I-D-B-E-Y. Mm -hmm. Very hard to get in trouble on Whidbey. Short of throwing rocks at cop cars, it was extremely tough to get in you trouble. Did you throw rocks at cop cars? No, no, but we thought about it a lot. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what to think here. The, so, <laughs> uh, sort of a shadowy pinball champion, throwing yep. rocks at cars, small town near Seattle. Yep. Uh, what were you into? I mean, what was your what was your life before this? What was uh, your career? Uh, well, you know, I'm older, so I know everyone here is super young and super attractive. Um, but that's just Scandinavia. <laughs> but growing up in the U.S. in the '80s was a little different. You know, you you could like, for example, you could go to university on basically money you found in your couch cushions. It was that easy. So no one really thought about the future that much. I and mean, we were just like, oh, let's just have fun. I mean, the '80s were just a, a big fun time. So you know, I studied business administration. I was like one of the few people in my university to have a computer in their dorm room. So. What was the early internet like? Was there, I mean, I'm trying, what I'm getting to here is how did you get into this conspiracy? Oh, how did I get into it? But um, before we get to the big one, yeah. like, like there were, I was on the early internet like a lot of people were, the, yeah. and there were conspiracies everywhere. Oh yeah, America, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's America, right? Yeah, we have the so, best conspiracies, yeah. just so you know. The, I have the figures here. Uh, let, me, let me, this is a good time to tell people this. The, yeah. In the United States, because you wouldn't know this because you're the most skeptical country in the world, yeah. but in the United States, 60% of people believe that the JFK assassination was a conspiracy. 60%. Yep. So the majority of Americans. Sure. 25% that Barack Obama is secretly a Muslim or a Kenyan or both. Yep. 25% believe 9-11 was an inside job. Yep. A quarter of the country. 21% think that the government is covering up alien contact. Yep. 20% believe vaccines are a conspiracy in some form or another. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you're not in on that one? Okay, we'll get that. 10% uh, yeah, we'll think that fluoride is some sort of conspiracy. Yeah. 6% um, say the moon landing was faked. 5% say the airplanes are producing chemtrails. Right. And 4% believe that the world is secretly controlled by reptile overlords. Yeah. Four yeah. And 4% 
is 12.3 million people. Yeah. And uh, let, me throw, let me throw a quick... Uh, I, I, you are the expert. Tell me. Well, no, no, no. Let me throw in a few more. We can talk about whatever you want, of course. I know we're going to be limited on time. But uh, think of the ones that are out recently that you know, polarize our country even more. Like Just about every Democrat in the United States believes, and maybe some of you as well, that the Russians helped Donald Trump get elected. Mm -hmm. And every Republican believes that Hillary Clinton had some sort of kill list. And mm -hmm. just Jeez. about everybody you know, doesn't buy that Jeffrey Epstein hung himself in that jail cell. All right, and Pizzagate and QAnon. Yeah, and Pizzagate and um, QAnon. There's all Pizzagate is uh, particularly uh, troubling because someone actually went to the supposed pizza parlor. I don't know if anyone here is... Have you, have you heard of Pizzagate? Mm. Okay. It's, that scares me. It's so not my favorite, but go <laughs> It's ahead. not your favorite? No. Neither is... It is not mine either, Mark. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, someone actually went to the pizza parlor and shot at people and had to be you know, taken to jail, and it was, someone almost died because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, they went there to see the ovens that supposedly Hillary Clinton was putting children in. Right. In the pizza parlor. Right. Yeah. We're in a very conspiratorial uh, period very. of time, and some would even say the President of the United States is a major conspiracy theorist. He was the person who made the birth certificate very popular. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? The birthing yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where he was Obama sort of, born? Yeah. He sort of created birthers. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> When I read that list, when I re before we get into this next question, when I read this list, do you are, is there do you believe all these? Do you think that one, some of these are questionable? If so, what um, no. I mean, I have an opinion. That was kind of how I got into what I what I got into now, which is I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy. I mean, you know, in the United States, there are as as you read off a ton of conspiracies, and a lot of people believe in them. Uh, and there's also what I like to call approved conspiracies. On top of all those on the list, the, the things that the media will talk about. But of course, they don't use the word conspiracy. They usually use the word scandal. Uh, so the Enron scandal. It's, it's, it's fine. You know, it was a massive conspiracy, of course, uh, but they don't like using that. And if somebody dies, they call it a tragedy. Very few times will they actually use the word conspiracy. But that's why I call them approved conspiracies. Mm -hmm. So uh, are there any of these sort of oh, do mainstream? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, there's quite a few of them. That, I mean, again, but you don't want me to go well, down those rabbit What I'm interested things. in is a first real question here after we've established uh, our happies and our report. <laughs> I want to know, yeah. are there any of these mainstream conspiracy theories that you f are skeptical of? Sure, uh, but not necessarily skeptical of as much as I'm no, not a fan. Meaning, there, as far as my l list of priorities, you know, conspiracies that mean anything to me, uh, there's a whole bunch that I just don't, well, you know, since what I'm into now, I don't really care. They're all been bumped down to second or third tier. Mm -hmm. um, for me, a conspiracy carries weight if... I hate to do this to you guys because I'm, I'm not your normal conspiracy guy. I kind of flip on the other side and I say, okay, I look at it in the terms of why and would I do it if I was them? You know, the greater good question. Okay. You know, when, when you get to a certain level, level of power, you do things for the greater good. You make decisions that the general popula population doesn't get a chance to make. And so would I make those decisions? So in a lot of the cases, yeah, but that's how I weigh them. You know, JFK. For example, uh, you're, you're with the JFK seems reasonable to you. J well, JFK was the first conspiracy I got, I got into. If you guys don't know, I, well, if you follow the... Um, they the, have to know. <laughs> well, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, how, how it got introduced really to the American public in mass was, of course, the Oliver Stone movie. Oh, yeah. For JFK sure, yeah. In, in the early 90s. And that literally was... I, I mean, I grew up on a rural island and I was naive about everything. I literally thought that nobody lied ever about anything. Why would someone in authority, why would a politician lie? Why would a corporation lie? It's like, you know, it was the 80s. And, and then when I saw JFK in the theater, like on opening weekend, it packed house, and everyone left there. I mean, you, yeah, of course, now you've got the stats. But back then, you know, everyone that left that theater was, was pretty ticked sure. at the time. Why not? But I, did I agree with the, it, yeah, do I believe in the JFK uh, conspiracy? Sure. I mean, come on, uh, a lone gunman that was then killed by a lone gunman? Come on. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, I, be I believed in the why. I understood the why, mm -hmm. which was, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys, why not? We're, we're family, right? Uh, which is, uh, I be he was a long time. If you want to know why, in my opinion, why, why JFK was, was taken out was because, I'm not saying trying to be casual when I say this, uh, he was a long-term problem, which was he was killed in 63, if he, isn't, if he isn't assassinated in 63, what happens in 64? 
he's reelected. He goes from 64 to 68, and then, of course, Robert comes in 68 to 72, and then 72 to 76, and by that time, we may have forgiven Ted for his sins, Ted Kennedy, who ended up being a senator forever. And so, you know, it's a, he was a long-term problem. And so I looked, and I was like, okay, if you're the military-industrial complex, do you make that move? Yeah, I prob probably would. I Sorry, I hate to so say it. What I'm wondering, though, is the reptile overlords thing. The reptile? No, I'm not a fan of reptile overlords. <laughs> okay. okay, let's let's do stuff that's not even on there. Hey, do I believe that Elvis is still around? No. Uh, do I believe necessarily in the the PizzaGate thing? Not as much. It's not my favorite. Yeah. But there's a lot of them. You know, I, I say sure. Why not? But, but gotta remember what I'm what I'm into now. Flat Earth. Yeah, we're gonna get there. Yeah. What what I'm into now means that I can't judge anyone. I literally, ah. if I start my day with that, how can I, how can I look at somebody when somebody says, oh yeah, by the way, I, I know a guy who know a guy who says that Bigfoot had Elvis's baby. Beforehand, I'd be like, get out of here. But now I'm like, yeah, I'll give you two minutes. Sure. This is what I, this is why I was asking these questions. This is yeah. what I was leading you into, and I'm sure you realize that. I, I was, um, I've never spoken to someone who believes in the flat earth Right. Uh, conspiracy theory, or I'm, I don't even know if that's even offensive to you to call it a conspiracy theory, but yeah. oh, we, called, we, called it, we called it a theory. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering um, how someone, this would be a very grand conspiracy, and I was wondering if you had skepticism toward the other conspiracies that are kind of grand, like the reptilian thing, or even Elvis can be considered way right. off the charts. Um, and I'm assuming you have a different sort of empathy toward people who are believers of those things. You don't just completely disregard. I do. Okay. I'd I, like to hear more about that. I, I do. Um, I mean, you know, I hang out in conspiracy circles. I, I do conferences and everyone that goes to these conferences, it's, you know, it's not just one thing. They have, you know, that list and which is really interesting because most of them, if you want to rate them, you know, it's like, okay, what's the top 25 in order of importance? They all have completely different lists and they debate them at length at these conferences mm -hmm. and oh I absolutely have empathy for them because you know I I, I know I know when they're again I'm a little different because I, I put myself on the other side of the chessboard but for them because I know the question is you know how do people get into conspiracy theories why did they get into conspiracy theories and most of the time when I look at them it comes down to a simple it maybe I'm oversimplifying it when I say good and evil right and wrong mm -hmm. everybody wants to be the white hats but you can't wear the white hat unless there's some black hats mm -hmm. And if there aren't any immediately in front of you, you're going to find them. You know, what was he saying? You know, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail mm -hmm. type of thing. And that's where, you know, a lot of it comes from. But at the same time, we all know there's real deception out there. And so the lines get blurred. And that's where it starts for him. Well, how did you, I mean, you, have a, you seem to have a very cogent uh, view of how conspiratorial thinking works. Yeah. How did you... Uh, find yourself in this flat Earth stuff. Like, what is the story? Oh, because I the, but conspired. What is the origin story of? How oh, this yeah, happened? yeah, yeah. The origin story was, uh, you know, starting with, you know, again, I'm not the, the traditional guy where you know I pull the drapes and I hide in darkness and I think about how sinister everything is. Um, but I had an opinion, like I said, on just about every conspiracy you can think of to where I basically ran out of conspiracies, you know, interesting things to look at. You say you're, you're like an aficionado of conspiracies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, again. You're just into it. Yeah, yeah. I like some. I didn't like others. But I'm also a huge movie fan. I'm a huge media guy. I absorb so much media to where conspiracies are just part of that media mm -hmm. to where I got bored. I mean, back in 2014, I honestly thought I'd basically finished the entire conspiracy library. And then I thought, okay, well, there is one thing that's on my bucket list that I probably shouldn't look into. But you know what? It's on my bucket list, and I'm not getting any younger, so let's do it. And that's when I clicked on the first one. It was made by a guy in Germany. I think his YouTube channel is called Cesar, uh, C-A-E-S-A-R. And he was talking about flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere. And what was interesting was, uh, I don't know if they talked about this in the documentary, was when I clicked on it. And remember, I'm, in a, I'm in living by myself in Boulder, Colorado. And there was nobody else with me. And I remember getting a visceral, visceral response to clicking on the video. I, w I got actually emotionally flushed, which was weird. You know, if you're on the internet, you've all clicked on some really weird stuff out there. You shouldn't be clicking on pages come up. Nothing really embarrassed me. But this did. 
Nothing embarrassing? I've been embarrassed. Well, I mean, no, there's stuff that's like, oh, that's kind of gross. But, <laughs> but the rest of it was, 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 was okay. I mean, but it never embarrassed me. I mean, yeah. like physically, I've never got actually flushed. And that's what happened when I looked at this. Why, why this? Why of all things? Well, that was just it. That's what I wanted to know. You wanted to know too. I was, I was very, very curious. And then, as, and then, of course, I said, well, okay, you know, I got past that initial reaction. I will try to shoot this down. Yeah. Everybody, everybody gets, everybody in the community that I'm in, every single one of them tries to kill it. Everybody says it's the dumbest thing ever. No one should ever look at it. And the, the one of the quotes I have that I, I put in the book was, uh, every day I try, I wake up and I try to destroy flat earth and every day I fail and I try, I try all the time and that's how we started. And so I tried, but I tried, you know, there wasn't as much content out there. So I tried for about nine months from summer of 2014, all the way up until about February of 2015. And then I did the dumbest thing ever. I said, okay, internet hive mind, cause all you guys I know are pillars of intellectual prowess. I said, show me where I'm wrong. And I made a series of videos called the Flat Earth Clues, and I put it out there. I said, you know, with, of course, all my contact information, which is super smart to do. You know, give my, my name, my email, my phone number, my physical address, my bank account numbers, routing numbers, and passport number. And I put it out there, and I said, show me where I'm wrong. And I thought that some intellectual would call me up and blow the thing just out of the water immediately. And instead, it was the opposite people just started calling for, I mean, forget about the media and just general people. Um, it was the subject matter experts that blew me away. All the, you know, people from all branches of the military and surveyors and engineers and uh, pilots. In fact, one from uh, KLM. Who well, got, well, when, the, when a person like this would reach out to you, what, what was it like? What would they say? Oh yeah. They, 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 it was always kind of like this, this weird hesitation where they would say, you know what? That's not the craziest thing I've ever heard. And here's why. I was completely unsolicited. If I ever live enough, long enough to write an autobiography, that's what it'll be called. Pi but pilots would do this. Yeah, yeah. The pilots would do it. They say, you know what? Everything we look at is from the front, from the front of the plane. They go, yeah, everything we see is, you know, this flat horizon that, you know, always rises at eye level and all the other things. And, it, it's, and it's weird because there's this paradox, they would say. It's like we all know, of course, it's a globe, right? It's a globe. But what we see, the pilots see, is not. Mm -hmm. And they, they said, you know, we're going to, you know, always the same thing. It's like, you know, they, they want to talk about it. They want to research it more, which of course is the overarching theme. And again, I don't know how much time we have, but the overarching theme of our groups is look, you know, don't take my word for it. Just do your own research and ask questions. I didn't even, when I made the clues, they were not hard. They included no math, no physics, no engineering. Uh, it was just, you know, okay, connect the dots. Here's where I think it leads, and, and then it just kept getting reinforced and reinforced and reinforced mm -hmm. to where now we're on tour this year. I mean, this is my fourth thing I'm doing this year. I still have three conferences to go. How many countries have you been to? What kind of, like, just how, recently? Like, okay, well, like how this many, year? Just name some countries you've been to. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, we'll just, do, we'll just do this year. Uh, we did Calgary, a cal conference in Calgary, um, Los Angeles, Auckland. And UK, which like tomorrow I'm flying out to UK, and then we're doing South Carolina and Dallas, Texas. But uh, yeah, and this, so yeah, it's gotten really, really weird. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to explain. It just keeps. It's this, this steamrolling thing that just drags so, me along. Well, so there's a big society now, and your your videos are getting like millions of views. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting. It's um, you reached out to the the stage, and then that you were brought onto the stage, basically. Yeah. yeah. And so you, it's it's a story a lot of people have when they, uh, when it comes to finding stuff on the internet and then becoming part of internet culture. Yeah. Like you have become a a celebrity for the for a new era. How how most people do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 I I did everything to not make that happen. I mean, you, you guys don't know. I mean, when I, when I built my YouTube channel, I literally, you know, turned off likes and dislikes and, and um, comments and didn't monetize anything for at least the first six months. And then finally Google reached out to me and said, hey, you know what? You might want to turn on monetization because you're, you're getting quite a few hits. I honestly didn't pay attention. I was just waiting for the phone calls and or emails. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the internet built this. Yeah, social media is a, is a fertile ground. It was interesting to me that you you discovered this through YouTube, and then I'm assuming the algorithms probably fed you more information, and you started yeah. to get kind of, sort of locked into maybe you haven't seen this video, but you should. Yeah. And then that 
became an exploratory thing, which would be like research. Yeah. And you started to build a case for this emotional reaction you had yeah. to that first video. Yeah. And then when you put out your own, it spread that emotional reaction to other people and they had they would do something similar. And so the community is being built algorithmically at the same time that you're putting effort into building the community. And now you're having conferences around the world. And yeah. And, and it got easier as we went along because, as you know, everything on the Internet sticks. So as more content, when I, you know, when I was doing the videos, there wasn't that much content out there. But people made more and more content along those lines. They all started it with the same journey. It's like, I hate this. This is the most terrible thing ever. I'm going to disprove it. <laughs> And when they started going into it, you know, but af as more and more people got inspired and made more videos, it became easier for people to came in. So after the first like 18 months, if you got into it, there was this wall of content that was out there. It was massive. And so and then it shocked. There was a shock and awe where people were like, wait, you know, when they when they got into it, you know, it's like oh, I'll do a search for flat earth and just it's like what it was like a secret quarter of the Internet. You didn't know existed. And it just appeared within you know, a calendar year. Yeah, that's another thing that makes this really fascinating to me is that this is a very young conspiratorial community. Um, oh, yeah. I think you, so, well, you started, what, 2015, 14? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm one of the oldest in it, and I've been doing it four years. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this sort of, this is, it, it's something I don't think could have occurred. I mean, this happens no. naturally throughout human history, but this quickly, and, and for you to be go from be, looking at it from being a uh, audience member mm -hmm. to being the person creating the audience in just a couple of years, that is something that really is a testament to a sea change in how yeah. media works. Yeah, yeah. Social media and six billion smartphones have, have changed everything. It is, it is incredibly it, it fast. What do you think would have, if, like, if it hadn't have been for, that, for just social media? If, if, let's say you had found this in the library, you'd read it in a right. book, and uh, it was pre it was 19 it was it was the 80s as you said oh yeah there's nothing you could do yeah i mean well if you're going to use that i'll use the example of um people have been you know especially in our country people have been suspicious of the american space program ever since it happened you know ever since they shut it down you know the, the moon missions in 1972 and but what are you going to do? I mean, the best that anyone could hope for was like maybe show up at like a UFO convention and pass out some photographs, some Xerox copies of things. Yeah. There was nothing, no, nothing connected to anybody. And so like when the Internet first came on, oh, yeah, all the old conspiracies, the older ones, ha got new life breathed into them. It was like anything else. You find out, oh, there are people outside of my hometown or into this. And now we can oh, yeah. the community. Yeah. Um, there's some, some two aspects of that I wanted to ask you about before I ask you some specifics about what this sure. actually is all about. Sure. Um, you mentioned in the documentary, and it, I don't know why, this just rang in my head ever since. Yeah. Um, once you become a flat earther, you can only date other flat earthers. Yeah. Is that a thing? There's flat earth dating apps. There's a whole flat earth social thing happening out there. Yeah, because the, the paradigm is so huge. Have you been on that app? No, no, I haven't. <laughs> but but I didn't have to either uh, because. Oh, of course not. Well, no, well, yeah, no, no, because well, well, seriously, I'm, I'm just not kidding you. When I when I would show up at conferences, I would run into people, uh, some wonderful women. Over the last four years, they would be like, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm into this, you know, want want to know more about you." And we started doing stuff, and so <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but it but everyone kind of says the same thing because there are marriages have failed. Because of this, uh, people, you know, relationships have been destroyed because of this. Because Why is that? Because it's such a huge, overarching paradigm shift that if your spouse or significant other or whatever isn't into it, there's an impasse there, you know. You, some, something's got to give, and so, it, you know, it just fails sometimes. But the, so the same... In the same way that you can find your community, though, you can find a partner who'd be into it. So, like, you shed this, like, it's another, it's another internet phenomenon where you're, the, you can, because of this new resource, you can find someone who would be okay with, the, with these beliefs, these yeah. new beliefs, these very young beliefs that have come into your life. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a strange, it's a strange world to live in. Again, it's so young, and we, we try to do all, you know, we, we tr we're, we're basically in uncharted territory every month. We just keep doing what we're doing, but most of us don't even know exactly why we're doing it other than we're inspired to do it, inspired to, yeah. you know, to spread the word. And I know that kind of sounds like a, a pseudo-religion. Well, it's like, I think you grab the back of a train here and you're being yeah. Peter again. Yeah, yeah, or an amusement park yeah. ride where it's, for me especially, it just came along and it's like, okay, I'll go where it leads, wherever it's going. 
One other question about this. I mean, what about your friends and family? How do they treat this? Are you, is your social group all made of people who are in like flat? No, 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 no. I mean, it's very, well, yeah, my social, my friends are all on board. Uh, however, family is mixed. It's, 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 a, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty even split. Mm -hmm. um, most of our community is in the closet. <laughs> Uh, you know, if, if the, the gay community is 50% in the closet, then the flat earth community is 90% in the closet. And I know this because I get emails all the time, mostly because of, they're afraid of the standard stuff, uh, you know, being ostracized by friends, family, or coworkers. And they, you know, th mostly coworkers. That's, that's always the big one. It's like family they can deal with, friends they can deal with, but you have to go to work every day, or maybe you don't. And, you know, you don't want to catch that sort of grief. So for me, it's the same sort of thing. I have cousins that are into it that will not come out. I've got, you know, people that hate it. And my sister just loathes it. She just absolutely, especially <laughs> since the documentary came out. Because she, yeah. she couldn't escape it at that point. Because once it hit Netflix, uh, there were people emailing her saying, oh, I saw your brother. Oh, I saw your brother. Yeah, she didn't want to hear that. that was a bad I can thing. imagine. Yeah. Um, it's like joining a... A, a, a religious faith that you don't agree with or something that it's a right. belief system that's the thing that makes this fascinating and, yeah. and from and as far as psychology is concerned a belief is a belief is a belief neuro yeah. neurologically biologically sure um so that's why i want to talk about what you actually do believe uh, yep. or as we would say in the business your claims right um so i'm going to get into this and if we uh i'm not really watching the time so somebody might have to grab my who has the time my ankle i've got it who right we, here. who do we watch um so very simple questions. Uh, yep. No judgment here. I'm just want to. I just oh, ask. Honestly. I've heard it. Uh, I, got, I, got, I, okay. I got yelled at by a lot of drunk people in Dublin two days ago. So I was doing street activism in Dublin and Belfast. Wait, wait, wait. Street activism. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, well, in the UK, it's a big thing. There is street activism. People get so pumped up about this that they will set up banners and hand out leaflets on the streets. Flat Earth. Yeah. Absolutely. And they, and they invited me because the, the conference is in the UK. They said, hey, would you, would you mind traveling on part of our tour uh, to some of these cities and do street activism? And I said, sure, why not? What's the worst that could happen to go to Belfast and Dublin and, and set up banners and, <laughs> Bad and, things and, and hand out stuff and have guys stagger up to you and say, what? So, yeah, so I did that. How did it go? It went actually really well. It was, it was surprising how many people knew who we were. Yeah. And how and from different countries. That was weird. When we were in Dublin, we had people from who see or seen the documentary or, or watched something on the internet. Yeah. Uh, South Africa, Australia, Bolivia, some schoolgirls from France, uh, a bunch of Americans. I mean, we had at least I don't know ten dozen people that showed up and, and like you know took selfies because they knew us in yeah. like a really short amount of time. If that gives you any idea. Wow. Yeah. It's a glow. Well, excuse me. No. It, is, it is a it's a worldwide. Yeah, movie. worldwide. worldwide. Um, so, what is the Earth, really? What is the Earth? What is the Earth? All right, I'll give you the short version real fast. So, mainstream science will say that you live here. Ooh, props. You have a prop. I know, right? I, I was not aware I, of this. I have two this props. This was not cleared by security. <laughs> no, we didn't. We did not script this. Uh, that you live on a little rock flying through space in multiple directions in an impossibly huge universe, and that you're insignificant, and you don't mean anything. We say differently. We say that you live in a flat enclosed system, like the ancient cosmologies have said, mm -hmm. you know, years and years, hundreds, sorry, centuries ago, if not millennia ago. And that there may be nothing outside of this. All the stars and the sun and the moon are on the inside, and you are incredibly significant. You are incredibly important, incredibly special. There's a theme there. I'm and, but there is a catch. And again, every flat earther, which might attach to some of your questions, which is, do all flat earthers agree on exactly what this looks like, the dimensions and all the fundamentals of it and the physics and the engineering? No, not at all. There's massive dissension in the ranks. However, what everyone can agree on, which is why I use that Scottish Highlands reference, mm -hmm. everyone in the flat earth community, again, can agree on one thing. It's like, it's not this. There's something wrong with this. There are way more, and you're a big writer, there's way more plot holes in this then there is this. And if you, you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself as far as why it resonates. You have the stage. Go for it. Oh, okay. Well, why, why it resonates? Why, why, why am I doing so many conferences? Why, why am I even here? Why did I just do that television commercial in Australia? 
Why all these things? Uh, because we have now created a way of explaining this that's easier than this. And you're saying, well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that it's right. And it's going, well, Sun Tzu, the art of war, people are like water. They always take the path of least resistance. They always will go for the easier thing. And because of that, it has resonated. We, have, we use very little mathematics, very few physics, although we do memorize a lot of basic things. And that's how we see it. I hear what you're saying, yeah. that it's simpler, but it yeah. doesn't seem simpler to me. It seems very complicated. Uh, well, of course. Um, because my, the first thing that makes this complicated to me is yeah. that seems like it's something that isn't naturally formed by the laws of physics. It seems like it's constructed. Absolutely. One of our points, by the way. Oh, and uh, let, me, let me throw this in here really quick. Okay. I, I don't want to jump around too much. But one of the big things, and again, I don't know the denominations of this room, but half at least half of our members, at least in the States and most in the UK, are hardcore Christian. And so the cosmology, and they have latched on to the King James Bible in a big, big way and gone through it with a fine tooth comb and said, well, basically the Bible is a flat earth book with the exception of maybe one verse. And because of that, yes, what you were saying, this is not any sort of, it looks, you know, built, it looks constructed, and that's our point, mm -hmm. which is, okay, well, if it was built, then it was built by someone, and whether you believe it's some ancient civilization that's much older and more powerful than yourself, or Santa Claus in a bathrobe, you know, you're really kind of splitting hairs. You're saying it could, be, it could be gods or aliens, or aliens that are like gods. Exactly. Did, did God make it, or did God subcontract out the work? <laughs> <laughs> um... I thought the Bible said that there were four corners of the earth, so it would be, it would be like... A, a oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, in, in most of the models, as a matter of fact, because, as you know, machines have a really hard time. Machines think really in squares. They don't, it's hard for a machine to think in circles. Uh, most of the, the big models of this would be this sitting on some sort of squarish thing, but it's not as easy. But you don't believe it's, on a, it's a square shape. It's a, it is a disc. Oh, it might be. Well, I mean, it, on the outsides, it might, be a, it might be a square, but this part that we're living on is a disc. And why the dome? Why? What is this purpose? Oh, why? Why do you have a dome? Because I've seen models that don't include the dome. Okay. Well, I, good point. You, you've done some research here. Uh, in our community, <laughs> maybe seventy percent of our community believe in the domed model, and another thirty percent, which is not a small percentage, believe that there is no dome. That it's an infinite plane. But most of the people believe that for a reason that they don't like being fenced in. Mm. They feel claustrophobic. Uh, but the dome, from a physics standpoint, works, works way, way better. And how is the math handled where if you're on an airplane yeah. and I go this way, right. which the way I understand it, you go around the planet to get where you're going and it'll be right. faster than going this way. Right. Why how, does, you how does that handled with this model? Oh, no, no, it's good. And so oh, people, first off, they say, you know, uh, how do you circumnavigate? You know, if you, if you take off in one direction, people have done it in planes, right? And you come back and you come back to the other direction. Mm hmm if you take your finger on a dinner plate and you move it around the outside rim, technically, and you come back to the same spot, technically you've circumnavigated that plate, but it's not a globe, it's not a sphere, it's not a ball. But wouldn't the, and I, I'm not judging, but I'm saying it seems to me if you were doing that as a pilot, you'd see the edge the whole time you're making the circle, right? Like, oh, you mean like if you're on the outer edge? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, sure, but then that goes into a whole other thing of the Antarctic Treaty. And again, I don't know how many people have watched my Flat Earth Clues or even watched the Behind the Curve documentary, uh, but the Antarctic Treaty was one of the things that kind of pushed me, you know, the tipping point for me, which is... This is the Treaty of Nations to no yeah, the, lay the, claim to the... Antarctic is the only treaty... The Antarctic Treaty is the only treaty that's never been broken in the history of mankind, and no one can go down there. Uh, other than military and military science. No one can mine it or the what? claim it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, if, if you're a corporation, let's say you're British Petroleum, you cannot set up shop there. Although I think some people are starting to lay claim to certain areas. Well, claims is one thing, but corporation-wise, you can't send anyone down there. You know, I mean, and I, and I get it. You know, when I was, again, if I, if I would have done the same thing, you know, if I, and by the way, there's another premise to this in that the best and brightest people, we didn't even detect this thing. We had the maps, but we didn't even have the technology to prove it out to the military and the governments until about 1960 when we had, you know, decent airplanes. So it was constructed. Right. It didn't form naturally. Right. Um, are, is this floating through space, or is it hoisted upon something? How is it? Why, uh, doesn't have, there doesn't have to be space. That's their thing. If all the stars are on the inside, 
that could be it, which is also another one, one of our points, which makes it easier, which is these things, two things seem to be the exact same size or roughly the same size, same mass. You could hold the same amount of people, mm -hmm. except that this cannot exist on its own. This needs a whole bunch of things to support it. It needs a sun, it needs the solar system, it needs a galaxy around that and a universe around that, not to mention geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. This, that's it, that's all you need. In fact, who say there's 7 billion people living in that thing right now? What's on the bottom? The what? What's on, what's on the bottom side of it? Oh, on this, it's a coin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, this, this was made by a, an Italian company. They just called me No, up I'm talking about the actual flat Earth. What's on the, oh, on the bottom? I do, we don't know. I mean, uh, what's, 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 what's the core of the Earth, for example? Deep, a uh, little, little quick thing for you guys, may or may not know. And that is uh, the deep, uh, if you believe in this, then you believe that the core of the Earth is 4,000 miles straight down, give or take. Uh, and we've all seen the cross sections in the science labs, you know, red and orange and yellow and white, you know, that white creamy center. Mm -hmm. uh, deepest hole ever drilled was by the Germans and the Soviets, eight miles, 12 kilometers. Right. So this brings up an interesting point. We, there are many mysteries of the universe to which we have only a, a few pieces of evidence so right. far. We don't have the tools or perhaps we haven't done the work yet. Yeah. Um, I think there is a conception that in something like the flat earth. Yeah that the people who believe this have an answer for absolutely everything. But if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that there is a lot of room for mystery within this model as well. Oh yeah, we don't have the, I mean, I've been doing this four years. So we, don't have, we don't have the answers, not even close. So, what, so how did people figure out that it was flat? I mean, what, is, what, were, the oh, 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 okay. what were the clues that led to this if you don't have the answers to everything? We don't have the, oh, I, no, I can, I can tell you it's a good one. Which is, again, for anyone here, can I prove this to you in a court of law right now? No, I can't. But can I create so much reasonable doubt in this that you have nowhere left to turn but to some sort of model like that? Yeah, I can. I can do you it can. all day long. And that is, that is why, if you want, again, why it resonates the way it does. That is why. Hmm. This is interesting to me uh, <laughs> for a lot of reasons. This, um, the reasonable doubt thing you're talking about. Yeah. Um, um, it seems to me that you've created a very high degree, a, a very high standard of proof right. for the globe model. Yes, very high. Um, and it's not immediately apparent to me that you, that you are holding the flat earth to that same degree of proof. Well, the science community tries to do that. But again, remember, we are really young by comparison. This has been out there for the better part of five centuries. Whereas this is the new version of this, we call ourselves basically Flat Earth 2.0, whereas the old society is mm -hmm. 1.0. Uh, we're still, you know, working through it. So if I'm hearing you correctly, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I want to, sure. I want to completely, I don't want to misrepresent you in any way. Yeah. Um, the, you're sort of leaving it, this is a very old model, right. and this is a very young one, yep. and this is to you, just one, a new hypothesis yeah. that you're putting out there into the mix yeah. that can be tested scientifically like any other hypothesis. Yeah. And how, to, your, to the best of your understanding, has it stood up to that testing so far? Really, really well. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a quick, um, uh, quick five-point five breakdown. Okay. Which is, you because know, we, again, we've had to come up with our own tests, and, and science has challenged us with our own tests. So there's a German, and I, you guys might know it better than I, there's a German television company network out there called ZF1. Mm -hmm. And they contacted me because I put a challenge. I go, I go give, me, give me somebody in astrophysics. Give me uh, somebody with a master's or PhD in something that I can talk to. And they found a guy out of Georgetown. And they said, okay, what we're going to do, because, you know, we don't want you guys talking over each other. We want to make this compartmentalized. We're going to have you record five quick questions, and we're going to take that video and play it for him, and he's going to respond, and we're going to go back and forth. You guys will probably not actually talk to each other at all, maybe. So they go, you start. And so I gave him five quick points. And I, I won't break them all down for you just be, because of time. Uh, but the first one would be long-distance photography that you can see way farther with HD cameras than you can, nor than you should be able to because of the, the curvature of the Earth with is eight, eight inches per mile squared. Um, the second one would be gravity versus the vacuum of space. How does the vacuum of space not rip off our atmosphere entirely? Which I've got some great arguments for, which I'm not going to get into in a second. Uh, clip shadow, too small. The blackout zone is 70 miles wide on a 2,000 mile wide object, but yet we don't see the same thing when the Earth is in front of the sun. 
And the moon temperature, which I thought was just a bizarre thing that was came up with by somebody else, which the moon, moon actually generates its own cold light up to 13 degrees Fahrenheit colder than moon shade, which shouldn't be possible. And which doesn't, of course, prove a flat Earth, but it does absolutely destroy the relationship between the sun and the moon. And last but not least, the Van Allen radiation belts, which is the Van Allen radiation belts, which were announced by NASA in 1959, if they're so deadly, then how did the Americans get through them round trip with aluminum shielding? Mm -hmm. Things can stop radiation, gold, lead, and a whole bunch of water. And you can't put those on any capsules. Nobody died, nobody got cancer. Uh, there's still five of them walking around today. So, and I gave, anyway, fired off those five points and he folded like a card table immediately. Who did? Uh, the guy at Georgetown. Oh. And he, he folded and that was it. ZF1 got really bent out of shape and they said, oh crap, and they couldn't run the segment mm -hmm. and that was it. I still have the, the thing recorded on my channel as far as the interview with uh, me and ZF1 as they were like setting it up. Yeah. The, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I've heard some of these before, but not all of them. Some of them are new. Um, yeah. You know, there's a, uh, when you move into the like rhetoric and philosophy, they talk about putting things into context. And, yeah. and this isn't, I feel like we're moving into the context of um, we have to choose uh, what epistemology we're going to like stick to to make sense of things yeah. and um the for to take this and move it into as a competing hypothesis with other hypotheses other hypotheses you have to disregard a lot of testimonies sure from researchers and from uh astronomy going all the way back to the greeks and um you have to disregard a lot of stuff yes and oh and yeah and throw out a whole bunch of new stuff as well correct and there's also photographic evidence that has to be explained in some way or another mm. um i guess what i'm interested here is like you know we could i mean we could all be in a simulation right oh yeah 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 so like, as, like, as a matter of fact i'm a huge simulation guy by the way right so that's when you throw something like that out it it, it makes nothing nothing impossible every, everything is nothing's impossible but if, to have any reasonable scientific discussion we have to say you have to stay away from simulations you don't have to stay away from it but you have to say we are we're using some standard by which to determine whether or not we have confidence in something right, right. so like let me when it comes to let's say the flat earth from like zero to 100 what would you say your confidence level is that the oh, earth is flat extremely high is it 100 percent or is it uh well, well it can't be 100 percent, but i'd say 99 so if you were if if you were to see evidence, oh, I'd I'd quit. I'd quit in a, in a second. You would quit. Absolutely quit. So you're you're willing to give up this belief which, if you were found compelling which, evidence, which is different from the documentary. And I know Daniel, and I know they spun that at the end. But uh -huh. no, I I've told people all the time. I go, look, I will quit this thing tomorrow, if you can blow it away. And that's what I was asking for in the beginning. I literally wanted somebody call me up from MIT, or Harvard, or Yale, or Oxford, or whatever else is out there, and say, look, shoot it down. Tell me where I went wrong. So how would a person go about figuring out, like, what to you is, do you consider reasonable when it comes to testing this, you know, because there are people who have presented tests and said, it fails my test, and right. I'm assuming you disagree with them. Right, right. How do you, what do you consider to be a good Are there any to, tests that can knock, could get me out of flat yeah, earth right how, now? Just, how does a person go about figuring out what is and is not true? I mean. Just in general, what is and what is not true, or, or, yeah, or just mean, with this? Because apparently the methods we're using don't apply very well to this or for some reason, there's, there's some reason you don't trust the current evidence that's out there as being worth Right. Wild. Well, like, yeah, well, the American space program was easy because, well, easier for us, because remember, Apollo was in doubt way before this. I mean, mm -hmm. Apollo was doubt in, in the 1970s. So by the time this came around, every, every, every doubt that anyone ever had about the American space program was then, you know, reinvigorated. So that was the first thing that everybody goes after, which is you have to dismiss basically the entire space program. Uh, I mean, and yes, it's, it's not hard to do. I could show you a random shot from Apollo 12, uh, put it up on screen, and, and I'd say, look, I see at least six things wrong with this. How many do you see? The point is you shouldn't see any. So why are they there? And then once, yeah, you have to go after the space programs first because a lot of people lean on that. However, I will put this to you guys. Uh, there was a great line by uh, George Orwell great line uh, from 1946 when he wrote it in the Tribune. 
and he was not a flat earther, right? But he wrote, and he, he was talking about the, credi- the responsibility of science, because we all take what, you know, everything that science says for granted. We just do. If you wear a white lab coat and walk around, massive amounts of credibility. So he said, you could go to anyone in the street and ask them how they know the world is a globe. And their first answer will always be the same. It's like, well, what are you talking about? We all know. It is known, Game of Thrones. You know, it, it's a given, right? It's a given. We all know. And then you push them on it. And he said this. He goes, if you, you, you go, really, how do you know? And then they start getting angry because they realize they don't. Remember, this was 1946. This was, how did everybody in the world in 1946 know it was a globe? NASA wasn't founded until 1958. How did everybody know this? And it wasn't because you knew. It's because you were told. That model had been in... And this is a big sticking point for you, the idea that... I feel like you're the kind of person, and I've met many people like this, and I think that's it's fantastic, that you would rather do your own research in one way or another. That yes. you, you want to see for yourself. Yes. And it's difficult to trust whoever these people may be, even if they are people in lab coats. I, I'm, a big, I'm a big believer of science, but I think that science has kind of jumped the rails and jumped into what I call scientism to where they just assume it's like, whatever we say, people are going to buy. Uh-huh. Uh, the, one of my, my favorite quotes is from Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I put this in my usual presentations, which is, he came out and he said, science is true whether or not you believe in it. And I thought that was one of the most arrogant things I've ever heard, which basically means, you know, if, if, if we say that it's a fact, it's a fact. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, until the day it isn't. Science is wrong about lots of things all the time. This is a self-correcting mechanism. And... If I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying that you are totally, you're totally down with the scientific method. It's the scientific, oh, yeah, the scientific method. We do it all the time. It's the scientific institution that you find yeah. most of your mistrust. Yeah. And that if you could apply the scientific method to this model and it turns up does, it's not a great model, you'd be willing to give it up. Absolutely, I would. And again, uh, Daniel and I, the director of the Behind the Curve, disagreed on this because he's, oh, no, Mark will never give it up. The, what I was trying to get to say was the community would, would complain bitterly. And that whole mayor thing at the end, it's like, no, I'm not the leader of Flat Earth. I am like the freshman recruiter because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't invent Flat Earth <laughs> 2.0. I did not invent this. Yeah. But what I did was I created the, the 101 book. And I hate using the term the dummy's guide for Flat Earth because it sounds redundant. <laughs> but, it's, but, but it's true. I, I created the, one, the, the, the Dummies Guide for Flat Earth. And I said, look, this is how you get into it. And then afterwards, that's how people uh, got in. So I'm the freshman recruiter. Um, we're pretty much at the end of our time. So I only, have one more, only can ask you one more question. Okay. Um, even though I feel like I could ask you five million uh, I, questions. I, this is what I do all day. Um, I talk about this. Yeah. Okay, go. Um, the... Um, Something I'm incredibly fascinated in is, is the idea of conspiratorial thinking, and there's, um, there are actually questionnaires you could ask people to determine where they fit on that, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it's not a bad thing at all. Conspiratorial yeah. thinking is probably evolutionarily sound to determine whether or not there are, um, there are bad agents out there who are conspiring against you, because it happens, right? Yeah. Um, but I've seen that the conspiratorial thinking within the conspiratorial community, community has created these bizarre schisms and layers. Yeah. Aren't there people in the flat earth world yes. um, who think that you are a secret agent? And this oh, whole thing, we're going to end on that? Okay, yes. Like, so this is a, I'm going to ask this. Yeah. And this is going to be a two-part question, and you're going to okay. talk, and when you're done, we're done, okay? Okay, okay. Um, one thing is, couldn't this be a conspiracy like to hide an even deeper truth about the world. Yes. And like, this is all false flag sure. stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah, were, people. That was people. put out there for you to find. Yeah. So that you would not go further and find yep. the real truth. Yep, okay. Sure. And secondly, there's, a, there's like people like Math Powerland, real name. Yeah. Who think that you are part of a conspiracy to make other flat earthers look bad. Exactly. It is, it's, so it's a could, new term out there real if quick. If you could wax poetic about that, We'll end there. Okay, uh, real quick, there's a new term out there. You guys will hear it eventually. It's called auto-hoaxing, which is conspiracy people. There's a lot of conspiracy people that have seen so many conspiracies that they think basically every news story has the potential to be a conspiracy. So it's basically fake until proven real. No matter what it is on the media, that, that's what it is. Am I the greatest secret agent ever? No, I am not. Uh, no, I, I have <laughs> nothing to do with any agency. Not at all. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I'm not. And uh, but yeah, there because of the conspiracy world, people will be suspicious. Most of it's just envy. Uh, then just then, envy. Yeah, most. I mean, math. You know, the, the guy from but, Montreal. But to keep it on track, and I'm, I swear this is the end. Yeah. 
How would we know for sure that, that you're not an agent? How, how can I convince you that I'm not an agent? Yeah, or anyone. That's a good point. Uh, I can only lead by example. I can only, eventually, okay, I'll tell people, it's like, look, if you're an agent, if you're like, you know, co-intel pro guy, eventually you're going to go off road. You're going to take the narrative, you're going to take the narrative, I'm into flat earth, I'm in flat earth, then I'm going to take it a completely different direction and go David Koresh and build a compound and, <laughs> and have stuff like that. And it hasn't happened. I tell people, I go, look, it's, I've been doing this four years. What's my grand plan when am I going to reveal all the secrets? It's like, no. I mean, but that's the best I can do. It's like, look, I haven't done anything to make me look like an agent yet. So, but yeah, it's like, it's like, me, like me asking, so how do I know you're not in uh, the Ku Klux Klan? I, I, you just have to trust me. Exactly. Well, no. on that note, <laughs> I put my trust in you. And from this point forward, I consider us fantastic friends, despite being on the divide of an epistemic conundrum. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. Thanks, guys.